Bob Popovic may very well be the godfather of bucktail flies, but Brad Bowen's fingerprint on the predator world is unmistakable. The hangtime musky fly pays homage to Brad's optic minnow and Bob's trailblazing techniques with bucktail. I like to tie these big patterns on big hooks. You can use stinger hooks, but I like to use large Aberdeen hooks like the Daiichi 2461. These 3X long hooks are dangerously sharp and ridiculously strong. Use care when tying on them. I'll always start with some super glue on the hook shank to prevent any possible spinning of materials later in the process. Get started with some strong tying thread, 140 or 210 ultra thread, I prefer red, at the back of the hook where we'll tie in our first material. Bucktail is the primary component of the hangtime musky fly, so make sure you have one with long quality fur. This chartreuse bucktail is going to create the base of the rearward facing materials. It'll be the foundation for all the materials that give this fly its length. Tie it on with about a quarter inch of the butt ends extended past the tie-in point and allow them to flare out a bit when you spin the bucktail onto the hook shank. Use your fingers to pull the fibers rearward and upward, forming them around the hook and making a secure base for the back of the fly. Spruce up those butt ends a bit and wind your tying thread through them, almost like you would a caddis head, until you reach the front of the bucktail. Use a few additional wraps to tie some of those flared fibers down if you wish. This recipe calls for a consistent regimen of fur, flash, and feathers. The feathers and flash can be interchanged, and it doesn't really matter to the fish. For the flash material, I'm using chartreuse or lime ice angel holographic flash. Consider how long you want this fly to be before taking about 15 to 20 pieces, the longest pieces that you can muster from the hank. To tie this flash in, you'll want to fold it onto the tying thread and zip line it down to the hook shank before bringing tying thread back over the top. Not only is this an easy way to tie in flash material, but it will prevent any fish from pulling them out when they short strike the fly. Next, we're going to grab some brown grizzly saddle hackle with nice long feathers. These will join the flash in adding length and movement to our fly, while the bucktail provides the body and the buoyancy. Select two hackle feathers, one for each side of the fly, and strip off the fluffy butt ends to expose the stem. I tie them in one at a time, simply capturing the exposed stem of each feather and making securing wraps to join the already nice taper I have started for my bucktail and flash coverings. We'll continue to do this all the way up to the front of the hook, and we'll tie in the bucktail a bit differently the rest of the way. We'll be reverse tying the bucktail to create a larger body profile without a lot of materials or weight. You can use your fingers for this step as well, which works perfectly fine, or you can use a tool to help push the materials back for you. I like to use a large plastic straw, especially on these larger flies. Get a bunch of bucktail, much the same as the first for length and diameter. Clean it out, remove any underfur, and instead of measuring the length of the bucktail facing rearward, the tips of the fur will be facing forward. Measure the butt ends to make sure they will cover the cone taper that you've created after tying in the back materials. Use two or three holding wraps to capture the bucktail, and then allow it to spin around the hook for complete coverage of the thread under wraps. We're going to push the flared bucktail tips back over the other materials before building another tapered cone of thread to hold them down. Once you have the fur all stroked back into place, sneak your thread in front of it and begin creating a tapered dam to push that material back. It's okay to keep pulling the materials back and molding them around the hook while you're using your thread to create this tapered dam. It may take quite a few thread wraps to make this taper, but try not to let the bulk get out of control. Simply keep nice, even pressured wraps going rearward onto the materials and bring your thread forward every once in a while to make sure those thread wraps don't slip in front. And you're gonna use your thread to make a presentation that works for you. For a wide body representation, Leave your taper a bit short, allowing those fibers to flare out and up on the hook. For a thinner fish profile, continue to wrap rearward to capture more of the bucktail and force it to lay down on itself. You have full control. I like to leave mine a bit flared because adding the flash and feathers in the next step will always help push it down a bit. Once you get the bucktail the way you like it, tie in another clump of flash the same way as before. Grab two more quality saddle feathers and prepare them like you did before. Tie those stems in on either side of the hook. Now once you tie on both feathers, it's a good idea to add a bit of extra security to these thread wraps. I told you before I like super glue, and I continue to use it throughout the tying process. 
I like to further bulletproof my flies with a light coating over the thread taper after all the materials have been tied in at a certain spot. This, in conjunction with the reverse tied bucktail ends, will make this fly last through many, many fish and many fishing seasons. Make sure you let that glue dry before adding the next round of reverse tied bucktail. We're gonna do the same process as before with the same material proportions. Reverse tie materials serve two purposes. First, the butt ends of the deer hair cover the exposed thread wraps, holding all of that back material together. It's like a bulletproof vest for your threat, especially against toothy critters with a mouthful of fly. Secondly, it adds a significant amount of body to the fly without adding a bunch of materials or weight. Not only does it make throwing this fly a little bit easier, but its buoyancy in the water has a tendency to drive fish crazy. If you've never tied this style of fly before, this process may take some getting used to. Don't get discouraged if your tapers don't look right or your materials get all wonky. That's part of the learning process. Tying big flies requires a lot of patience and practice. Once you get it dialed in though, you'll have patterns that will crush musky, northern, smallies, largemouth, trout, wipers, and any other fish that will eat a smaller one. Just keep working at it, it'll get easier. Fur, flash, feathers. I'll usually reverse tie bucktail up to the three quarter point of the hook before I change color. On a hook this size, that's gonna require three rounds of fur, flash, feather process, adding super glue in between. After the third round of reverse tied chartreuse bucktail, I'm gonna change up the flash material. Rather than using angel holographic flash, I'm gonna use some crystal mirror flash for some contrasting light and movement near the front of the fly. Red is always a good color for predator fish, so I'm gonna tie that in as the flash near the front. Tie it in like you did the others, folding it over the tying thread and zip lining it down to the tapered thread dam. If you find your thread slipping off the material while you're tying them in, up the taper, it might be helpful to move your thread further to the front of the taper before starting to tie in your flash. This will allow you to add to the front of the taper first, making it less likely for those thread wraps to slip down as you progress back towards the larger end. Black and blue bucktail is a great complement color to chartreuse. Making sure all under wraps are covered and at least some of the bucktail is present all around the hook shank. Use your straw one final time to push those buck tips rearward and over the butt ends. Build out your taper to lay the black and blue fur back over the front of the fly. The final step will be to bulk up the head with some synthetic hackle flash. This material makes great bait fish patterns on its own, but serves a smaller purpose on the hang time fly. Trim a 10 to 12 inch piece from the pack and tie it in on the back end of the taper. Palmer the hackle forward with touching wraps while stroking the fibers back. Bring the hackle flash all the way up to behind the eye before capturing your thread, trimming the tag end, and whip finishing or half hitching. After trimming your thread, Cover any exposed thread wraps behind the eye with a small amount of UV resin. A drop on top and a drop on bottom before hitting it with the light will solidify an already durable and productive predator pattern. Nice work. The hangtime musky fly is my confidence pattern when chucking big baits for predator species. The tug from a big fish on this fly will keep you going back for more. Larvalace has everything you need to tie the hangtime musky fly. Make sure your favorite fly shop has them all in stock. If they don't, send them to hagensfish.com or give them Lori's number so they can get that squared away. Fly Tying University is growing and we need your help to make it even better. Come join the new Facebook club for all fly tires and join in on the conversation today. Larvalace is a proud partner of the Fish Stories Archive. Record your fishing stories and save them for future generations. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope this video helped you out. Time to go find some tight lines.